I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. Countries are reacting in different ways as to how best to manage the overwhelming amounts of dis and misinformation circulating over the internet. In some cases, limited internet shutdowns are being implemented to quell panic. How much control of information should there be? And by whom? And how can false information be effectively challenged? And what if that false information is coming from companies or from governments? I think it's very important that we make sure that there is concise communication with all healthcare facilities where these patients are being treated so that there isn't mass panic. We're at a moment where the social media platforms have to step forward and recognize the moment to assert that they're a technology platform and not a broadcaster is, is over. Um, they, in fact, have to be a participant in broadcasting accurate information and partnering with the scientific and health communities <coughs> to counterweight, if not flood the zone, of accurate information. Because to, try to put the genie back in the bottle of the misinformation and disinformation is nigh impossible. One thing we haven't spoken about, and I'm wondering whether it's time to talk about this, is uh, a step up from the part of the governments on enforcement actions against fake news. I personally do not believe that trying to shut things down in terms of information is either practical or desirable. And we do have, I think, a, a couple of strategies that are available to us, one of which is the flood strategy, second of which is relying and informing and equipping trusted uh, sources of information with the facts so they can then pass that on. But we also need to actually think about a technological answer to this. Well, as the coronavirus spreads across the world, misinformation about the virus is being shared online, and some of it could be coming from foreign governments or other actors. A top State Department official told the Washington Post last week that Russia has been creating false personas to spread misinformation on social media. So joining us now is CNET senior producer Dan Patterson with more on this. So Dan, I'm really happy you're here. Uh, you have made me kind of like a warrior against misinformation, and I am perpetually disappointed in uh, the number of people that I see spreading things that I consider obviously false. So let us talk about this. But they're not the only things you might find if you look online for coronavirus information. Over the past few months, social media companies have been waging their own war against a different kind of pathogen. Dubbed an infodemic by the World Health Organization, social networks have been deluged with information about the coronavirus. Some of this is correct and helpful, but a lot of it is misleading, half true or completely fake. And that's making the real information and advice much harder to find. It turns out that misinformation and conspiracy theories about COVID-19 are rapidly spreading online, creating what public health officials around the world are now calling an infodemic. John Yang charged the dangerous course of falsehoods during this global health crisis. This can help prevent infection of the coronavirus. Around the world, journalists find themselves debunking wild claims, miracle cures, and prevention methods. You need to microwave your mail to kill the COVID-19 virus. Stories on the origins of the virus. Is the Wuhan coronavirus a biological weapon? Was it built in a lab by scientists and unleashed on the masses? Theories about vaccines and billionaire Bill Gates claiming that he actually created the virus to trick people into getting microchipped. One particularly persistent falsehood, 5G mobile networks transmit COVID-19. You know when they turn this on, it's gonna kill everyone. And that's A woman in Britain them. called workers killers for laying 5G fiber optic cables. When they turn that switch on, bye-bye mama. Eva! Across the United Kingdom, arsonists have burned cell towers and the claim has been shared online with millions around the world. The 5G story is complete and utter rubbish. It's nonsense. It's the worst kind of fake news. 
The reality is that the mobile phone networks are absolutely critical. It's a, a nonstop uh, hurricane of misinformation and disinformation to debunk. At a time when reliable information is vital for public health, fake news about COVID-19 might be spreading even faster than the facts. We're not just fighting an epidemic, we're fighting an infodemic. Fake news spreads faster and more easily than this virus and is just as dangerous. We have many of us shuttered inside our homes. We're using social media and other online information sources more than ever. But amid this viral pandemic, the spread of misinformation that's been dogging our politics could now be a matter of life or death. Wired editor-in-chief Nick Thompson has been writing about the role of technology in this current crisis. He joins us now to talk about it. Uh, Nick, good morning. I want to talk about the Wired piece on ibuprofen and the panic that, that started. Uh, to take us back, I mean, there's always been panics about misinformation and information snowballing, but it's magnified in this day and age. Hey guys, um, I was actually inspired to make this video today by a comment uh, that I received in reply to one that I had left on a uh, YouTube channel. Her name is Lee Dundas. Uh, she's an attorney, I believe, in California um, who had some good videos about, you know, how masks are bullshit and social distancing is a CIA torture technique developed after the Second War, um, Second World War, I mean. And uh, I noticed that her channel had all her videos taken down except one. Um, and I was wondering if she had been censored. And uh, basically I posted a comment saying as much. And uh, I got a reply today. And I just wanted you to read this reply. Um, because it's, it's, it's a great example of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, when I put those videos together in the beginning, my point was... Um, that they simulated this entire thing before it happened. And then they even said, how are we going to combat misinformation about this virus in the simulation and what they would do and even talked about uh, purposeful internet shutdowns to stop quote-unquote misinformation. Um, and what you see right now in the media is them doing, you know, just that, silencing anyone who has a dissenting opinion from the narrative that's being propagated by quote-unquote authorities you know what I mean so here's the comment uh, her channel if you want to check her out like I said I, I don't even know if she's gonna respond to people anymore but her name is Lee Dundas she's an attorney in California I believe um, I made the comment did you get censored notice your videos about it are gone blah 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 things are getting crazy they're really just going for it stay safe um, and this is the response I got. So there's three possibilities here, in my opinion. One, this is a real person, and they genuinely believe what they just said, um, which I, I think is the most terrifying of the three, because if they genuinely believe this, the level of ignorance is astonishing, um, and it's, it should terrify you that this type of person, if they exist do exist. <laughs> That's a problem in and of itself. But uh, number two is that this person or group of people, whoever, was paid or were paid to make this comment. This seems the most likely since their name is Pseudoscience Debunker. Um, with a name like that, it makes me think that this is a shill account. Uh, the third possibility is it could be a, you know, a bot and it's not even a real person and it's artificial intelligence programmed to just mass comment on, you know, videos trying to spread uh, or people trying to spread real information, but they consider it disinformation. So those are the three possibilities, but let's read the comment and I'll let you decide for yourself. Because of all, because all of that stuff is one lies and two harmful to the public at large. Her and her fake mask exemption cards with their despicable band of Karens have resulted in the bullying of a public health official from office and now Orange County has the highest COVID-19 infection rate in the country. Masks work. They do not lower your O2 saturation. Numerous real doctors have gone on the record to point this out. Distancing works. K. 
California was a leader in COVID-19 containment, and then the Karen Dundas Brigade started spreading their misinformation, and now we have to shut down the economy again. We could be completely done with C-19 and have open schools with eight weeks of strictly enforced distancing and mask usage. But instead, these self-entitled fools with their magical thinking have undoubtedly extended the pandemic into 2021. She should be disbarred for acting against the public interest. Okay, does that sound like a real person to you? Does that sound like a real comment? Seriously, does that sound like a real person? Or does this sound like a bunch of talking points crammed into one little response? I'll let you be the judge. But seriously, <laughs> if this is a real person, God God help them. Like, seriously. <laughs> Men as mentally deranged as they can be. Um, I'm going to give you a couple definitions before I close this video out. The first definition is gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which a person or group covertly sows seeds of doubt in a targeted individual or group, uh, making them question their own memory, perception, or judgment, often evoking them, invoking in them cognitive dissonance and other changes including low self-esteem. Using denial, misdirection, contradiction, and misinformation, gaslighting involves attempts to destabilize the victim and delegitimize the victim's beliefs. Instances can range from the denial by an abuser that previous abusive incidents occurred to the staging of bizarre events by the abuser with the intention of disorienting the victim. Hmm, what do we got going on right now with this whole quote-unquote pandemic? Seems like a staging of a bizarre event to me. The term originated from the British play Gaslight in 1938, but originally performed as Angel Street in the United States, and its 1940 and 1944 film adaptations both titled Gaslight. The term has been used in clinical psychological literature, as well as in political commentary and philosophy. Now let's go down to some of the characteristics. Gaslighting involves a person, or a group of persons, the victimizer, and a second person, the victim. It can be either conscious or unconscious and is carried out covertly such that the resulting emotional abuse is not overtly abusive. Gaslighting depends on first convincing the victim that his thinking is distorted and secondly persuading him that the victimizer's ideas are the correct and true ones. What does the media do? The media tries to push a narrative, right? And they try to convince you that if you disagree with the narrative, you are uninformed, you are unscientific, you are uncivilized, you are a deplorable, you are a, you know, shitty person all around, right? That's what they do. They try to tell you, you believe this, and if you don't believe this, well, you're not in, you're not, you're not with it, you're not smart, you're not educated on the subject. <sighs> Gaslighting induces cognitive dissonance in the victim, often quite emotionally charged cognitive dissonance. It makes the victim question their own thinking, perception, and reality testing, and thereby tends to evoke in them low self-esteem and disturbing ideas and affects. It may facilitate development of confusion, anxiety, depression, and in some cases, even psychosis. After, after the victim loses confidence in their mental capacities and develops a sense of learned helplessness, they become more susceptible to the victimizer's control. Victims tend to be people and very less power, or tend to be people with less power and authority. So what did they just tell you right there? All of these negative emotions and things can be caused by this technique of psychological manipulation, which is primarily practiced by the media, politicians, you know, talking heads, figureheads, whatever you want to call them. These people are causing worldwide depression. I remember reading, uh, it, it was like an Australian news article, I believe, and they were saying that uh, suicides from the lockdowns are actually probably going to outnumber the actual deaths from the disease. And remember that this lockdown was caused by the very same people who are telling you that it's good for you. Do you know what I mean? When you're committing suicide as a result of their advice, 
you know what I mean? That couldn't be a better example of gaslighting. Um, the role of either victimizer or victim can oscillate within a given relationship, and often each of the participants is convinced that they are the victim. When a group of people acts as a victimizer, the media, gaslighting does its damage through the group members. Small, often invisible actions that have power through their accumulation and reinforcement. Gaslighting has been used by individuals and groups for attaining interpersonal and social control over the psychic functioning of other individuals and groups. The illusory truth effect. The illusory truth effect. What is that? That's the official narrative that's being pushed right now that this is a real pandemic. The illusory illusory truth effect, a phenomenon in which a listener comes to believe something primarily because it has been repeated so often, may occur to a victim during gaslighting. Okay. So they tell you it's real, they tell you it's real, they tell you it's real, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, get tested, get tested, get tested, get a vaccine, get a vaccine, get a vaccine, Conspiracy theorists bad, conspiracy theorists bad, conspiracy theorists bad. You get my point. Psychological manipulation. This is the definition right here. Psychological manipulation is a type of social influence that aims to change the behavior or perception of others through indirect, deceptive, or underhanded tactics. By advancing the interests of the manipulator, often at another's expense, such methods could be considered exploitative and devious. Social influence is not necessarily negative. For example, people such as friends, family, and doctors can try to persuade to change clearly unhelpful habits and behaviors. Social influence is generally perceived to be harmless when it comes or when it respects the right of the influenced to accept or reject it, and it is not unduly coercive, depending on the context and motivations. It may constitute underhanded manipulation. So look at this right here. Social influence is not necessarily negative. For example, people such as friends, family, and doctors can try to persuade to change clearly unhelpful habits and behaviors. Check this clip out. So what do you do when this happens? A loved one, let's say it's your dad, drops into the family group chat with something he thinks is real. It's something about China manufacturing the coronavirus. There's a link to a site you've never heard of with a message calling it scary stuff. So what do you do with this? Do you ignore it? Do you call him out saying how ridiculous you think this is? If you do that to your dad, you've actually shamed him. My name is Claire Wardle and I'm the US director of First Draft and we are a nonprofit that we help people navigate the challenges of misinformation online. What happens is that your dad doubles down on his view and he dismisses what you're saying. Use language that's empathetic and to say we're all in this together and rather than you're wrong, I'm right here with the facts because that does not work. So hold back on all that reactive talk. Maybe try something like this. Yeah, these are scary times. We're all a bit afraid, but let's be careful. What you're sharing is inaccurate and it feeds into that fear we all feel. Everybody's like anxiety is so heightened right now. People are sharing this stuff not for any malicious reasons, but because they're scared too. Sending more context could also be a good move, but don't drown him in evidence. Maybe send an article from a legitimate source quoting credible scientists on why the virus wasn't manufactured. Conspiracies can be just as infectious, just as dangerous as a virus, so you have to guard against them. It's very easy to just mute your crazy high school friend on Facebook or to leave a WhatsApp group where people are sharing false information. But right now, I actually think there's kind of a responsibility on all of us to help people understand that sharing that kind of information is increasing the level of pollution. Okay, now I want you to read this. This is a little example of it underneath with a little broadcaster, right? Examples of televised manipulation can be found in news programs that can potentially influence mass audiences. Pictured is the infamous uh, Dezenic Journal newscast which attempted to slander capitalism and then-communist Poland using emotive and loaded language. So they admit that the news media will do this to manipulate mass audiences. But of course, they're using an example from a long time ago and they're using an example from a foreign country. They're not going to show you a current example produced yesterday by CNN or NBC or whoever else. 
and they're not going to show it produced in the U.S. And the reason they won't do that is because they want to convince you that it's old and it doesn't happen anymore. And when it did, it only happened in places that weren't here. When the reality is, it happens every day here. Almost everything you see on the television is bullshit. They repealed the smith mund Act, remember that, in 2010. That means the United States can produce propaganda against its citizens domestically and suffer new, no repercussions. Guys, this stuff is real. Um, like I said, if, the, if that's a real person who really wrote that comment, watch this video. Um, and if that doesn't convince you, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're going to have a real hard time in life. I mean, I don't know how you haven't drank Windex yet thinking it's Kool-Aid, you know what I mean? Or how you haven't just walked into traffic and got hit by a car. Like, you, you are that low-level intelligence. But again, it's probably not a real person. So I'm not going to keep this video going on any longer. Just wanted to make it real quick so you guys could get a good example, you know, and see what I'm talking about. Um, think for yourself. Remember, always question everything, even me. Don't, don't take anything I've just said as gospel. Please research it. Look into it yourself. Look into neurolinguistic programming, pacing and leading techniques, anchoring terms. Look into psychological and verbal manipulation. These things are really real, and these people are trained to do it. You know what I mean? And you're not trained to pick up on it, and you need to train yourself. That's what it comes down to. So you guys have a good day. God bless. Take care.